Hi everyone, how are you? I'm back and it's finally time to get started on the sunset dress. So I'm on top of all my orders. I finished a wedding dress last week. She collected on Friday and she actually got married on Saturday. Um, I'm an idiot and forgot to take pictures of the finished dress before she collected it. Um, so I can't wait to get official pictures from her to share with you because it was my first airbrush dress and I was so happy with it how it came out. Um, I've got my little airbrush samples here I can show you and give you an idea. So the bottom of her dress on this star fabric went from purple to blue and then up to like a pale aqua as it faded out. Uh, this was the dress that we had to change the fabric for because the fabric that we actually wanted was stuck in China. This was another test piece just to see if I was going to do the, just the tulle layer or all the layers. Um, this was the one where I did all the layers. We ended up just doing the tulle. So it was the tulle. Oh, this one's got some other little colour tests on. But we ended up using the white lining and then this lovely silver sequin mesh which was the replacement fabric for the one we couldn't get and then the star fabric over the top and it actually worked out really beautifully and then you can see from my little sample how much the stars and the colour stood out over that silver and then we added more Swarovski crystals on top and it was just yeah really gorgeous it was a corseted dress so I will talk to you more about that and share some more pictures when I get her wedding photos. I've got another um, real bride to share with you soon. She's just sent me her pictures um, this morning. She got married back in last September. We actually filmed a video together because she's got a really important message about being yourself on your wedding day. So I'll share that soon as well. Okay, yeah, so today, um, now all my orders are done, it's finally time to start working on the sunset dress. So. If you haven't seen the design for the sunset dress and me talking about what the design is and what it's going to, how I'm going to make it, go back and watch part one. At the end of part one, there's a big long life update at the start and then at the end I show you the design and the fabrics and talk about it. So go back and watch that if you haven't already. Um, this is going to be my first dress that is fully airbrushed. So I've done the Halloween dress which had the airbrushing at the bottom. I've just finished this wedding dress with the airbrushing at the bottom. But this is going to be my first fully airbrushed dress and I'm really excited. So the first thing I need to do is to work out what fabric I'm going to use. So um, I used cotton drill when I did the Halloween dress at the bottom of the dress. And it looked great and it took the colour beautifully but it was just a bit too thick once it had all the paint on it and it ended up a bit stiff and heavy. And I don't want this dress to be quite so stiff. So today I'm going to go and set up the airbrush and I'm going to do some experiments on some different fabrics and work out what the best one to use is. To test I've got four different fabrics that I'm going to use. Well three different fabrics but this one I'm going to use both sides. So I've got some polyester satin. So I'm worried this might be a little bit too shiny and I'm worried that the paint might not work very well on the satiny side of it so I'm going to do one test on the satin side of the polyester satin then I'm going to do one test on the wrong side of it the matte side of it which is a little bit rougher so I'm going to spray on there and see how that turns out as well so that's my first two I've then got some poly cotton so I've pre-washed this on a hot wash and pressed it and I've actually put some interfacing on part of it as well so I can see how it goes because I'll probably need to interface the top of the dress so I want to see how it goes just on the poly cotton itself and on the interface part so there's that one and then the last one is a pure cotton and again I've pre-washed this on hot and I've put some interfacing on it I managed to get a massive dirty mark on it when it was drying on the line as well so <laughs> Yeah, so this is my 100% cotton. This is this is stiffer than the poly cotton, but not as stiff as the cotton drill. So I'm going to go and airbrush these and see how they turn out. I'm just going to do random colours from now because the colour's not really important. It's more the finish and how how the finish looks, how shiny or matte it is, and how stiff the fabric goes with the paint on it. Okay, I'm all set up in my garage, ready to do my airbrush tests on these pieces of fabric. I've got my compressor ready, I've attached my airbrush, so I'm using, it's the Badger 155 Anthem is the airbrush that I use. I think that cost me around $300. And then the paint I'm using is the Jacquard airbrush colour in opaque. And I mix these 50-50 with water and, and you can mix them, they come in sort of basic colours and you can mix them together to create the colours you want. I buy the big size like this. And that cost me around $100 for six of them. 
I have the PSI on my compressor set to about 35. Lil's come to help me. Hi. Are you enjoying this? Yes. I think we're done. You think? Yeah. Well, I think this looks like a sunset. That's the idea, because it's for my sunset dress. So I ended up doing more sunset colours than I was going to. Um, yeah, it's very different on all four fabrics. I'm going to leave them to dry, and then we'll have a close look and see what they're like. But the cotton, I think, is looking like the best. The poly cotton, cotton's got this kind of... Dot? Yeah, it's, you can see the texture on the surface quite a lot, which I don't like. And on the satin, it's really spread, and it's come out really pastel. So we'll leave them to dry, and then we'll have a closer look, and we'll decide which fabric's going to be the best to use for this dress. Okay, so these are my finished fabric tests now that they've dried. This is my satin with the satin side up. You can see the colours aren't very vibrant. They did spread quite a lot and it's given, I quite like the finish on it, but it's not right for this. So this one is the satin on the wrong side. Again, it's very subdued colours. The, the paint spread quite a lot as well. So, and in places, it's just sort of bled through and it hasn't given a great finish at all. So I'm not gonna be using the satin on either side. Next up, this is the cotton. It's given a really nice vibrant colours. It's a little bit stiff, but it was a bit stiff to start with anyway. And it's worked really well where the interfacing is as well. So I'm happy with the results on the cotton. And then this one is the poly cotton, which when I did it and it was wet, it gave quite a textured finish. It was quite bobbly, but now it's dry. It's, it's still fairly soft on the edge of the poly cotton and it's, it's worked well where the interfacing is as well. And I like the vibrancy and I like the finish. So I've got to decide between the cotton and the poly cotton. I really like them both. But I think the, um, the parts of the poly cotton without the interfacing are still a little bit translucent because it was quite a fine fabric. So I think I'm probably going to go with the cotton for this dress. It's just a slightly smoother finish on the surface as well. Okay, so the cotton is definitely my winner here. I did like the poly cotton too, but it's just a little bit too translucent. But I'm happy with how the cotton looks. I'm happy with the finish on it as well. I'm happy with how vibrant the colours are. It's still fairly soft in the bits that have been painted, but it worked well with the bits with the interfacing as well. Yeah, really happy with that. So once I've figured out my pattern, I'll work out how much I need, and I'll go back to Spotlight and buy more of this and wash and pre-wash it all in hot again before I start cutting it out. So tomorrow, I'm gonna to start working on my pattern. Now, I've done a few corseted dresses before and corsets, and I've always used patterns that I already had here and I've adapted them. But because I don't sell the patterns and because I'm not drafting them each time, I have been asked a few times if I could show you how to make a corset pattern. So I thought the easiest way to show you how to make a corset pattern for a corseted dress would be to adapt a bodice pattern. And I've chosen to do it this way down. There's a lot of corset patterns you can buy, but generally most corset patterns have got like four, five or six panels either side. But I want my dresses to still look like a dress pattern when they're made. So I prefer to use a corset pattern that's got a front, side front, side back and back. So you've still got a nice side seam. So it's still got the same kind of lines as the dress that's going over it. So what I've, I've done is I've bought this pattern, which is Berta 6776. And the only part of this I'm actually going to use is the bodice part. So the bodice itself has got a really nice princess seam to it. It's just slightly longer than the waist, but I'll show you how to lengthen that and how to take the waist in. 
and you can use any bodice pattern that's got four panels in it um, a lot of them don't have a side back seam it's just a front side front and then a single piece for the back but I find you need that side back seam on your bodice or your corset to get that nice shaping there as well it's too flat otherwise that's my bodice pattern pieces so that's what we're going to be using as the basis for the corset and I'm going to show you how to take this and turn this into a good corset pattern to use to make a corseted dress from so I will be starting that tomorrow so hopefully that will be up tomorrow night so please check back then please subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you click the little bell so you get notified when I upload a new video I'm going to try and upload a video for this dress every day or two days as I'm working on it so I can give you really in-depth um, instruction on how I'm doing it so I can show you all the little details rather than sort of squeezing it down and missing out any important steps so hopefully this is something then that you can take and do for yourself um, whether it's all the whole thing with all the spray paint here if you just use this to create your own corseted dress patterns yep so tomorrow I'll be back to show you how I take this bodice pattern and turn it into a corset pattern ready to make my corseted dress see you soon thanks for watching